Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome back to Cadenham Castle here in Planet Coaster. So this week is the coaster that was meant to be the finale episode, but I decided to bring it forward so I can prepare for something even better. So I hope you don't mind a wing coaster instead. I mean, you don't mind, right? That's right, you guys. The move is all done and we are coming from the new place. But I haven't quite worked out the acoustics of the room yet. Like, I don't know if you can hear it, but there is an echo. Like, echo, echo, echo. <laughs> anyway, so I'm able to carry on with the episodes. I've actually switched to another really quick build. And this was supposed to be the finale episode. But because this is a quick build, I decided to do this one first. And it actually means I've got time to plan what I thought was going to be the next episode anyway, so it's all good. It'll work out, I promise. But we're not going to get outdone by Legoland Deutschland and Chessington's family wing coasters. No, Cadnam's going to get his own, of course. Uh, so the problem that I've got here, though, is that uh, these coasters in-game are only rideable by adults and teens. They're not actually available to be ridden by children. Uh, so uh, we just kind of got a squint, I guess, you know. It is, it is what it is. Now, these coasters are not meant to be... Uh, thrilling. They're not meant to be fast. They are supposed to be family coasters that kids ride. So just remember that when you're judging the hell out of this, right? Uh, but it does introduce Cadnam Castle's only inversions. There's one here and there's one here. And actually, I like how this is how this has turned out. It's very inspired by Legoland Deutschland's uh, wing coaster for Mythica. So. It's going to ride exactly as it, as it should do. So what we're going for here is the station. And of course, it's going to have the usual dual loading. That's why I've got these two bits here that I don't normally put on a station. These are actually the stairways to either side. One needs to be uh, the entrance here. And then of course, this is the entrance here. And that's going to be the queue line. So it's going to be dual loading station. You'll see that in the next update. Uh, coming to the lift hill. This is actually a really shallow lift hill for a wing coaster. It's 30 degrees. Remembering that wing coasters can have lift deals of 45, so this is a 30, and oh, you can really hear the echo now, can't you? <laughs> Quick, we need music back. So we're going to come into the uh, into the first drop here, and then the first turn around. Um, it's really low to the ground, it's proper high banked, and then it's going to come into an airtime hill here. Then into a slightly lower turnaround, and that's because this actually wastes a little bit of energy here. It's sort of... You know, it slows down quite a bit, so I needed to build up some more speed. And then it comes into this really strange element. So this is a, a play on the zero-G turns that you find on modern uh, B&Ms in the sense that it goes into the zero-G and then uh, goes round into a bend. But it also incorporates a corkscrew in this as well. So I have actually checked this out with a profiling specialist at B&M. And yes, this is a viable uh, thing you don't see them IRL so you know, I know that you guys are going to come at me for that oh I've never seen that before so therefore it's not realistic blah 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 but trust me I've checked it out it's viable that's all that matters <laughs> so anyway we come into a, a, a turnaround here into an airtime hill and then into almost a, a helix but it's more of a turnaround uh, and then into a, a snake pass if you like into a high banked turn because we're doing a bit of speed at this point and then we come into the zero G over the um, uh, over the the entrance path, and then into the final break run, which then goes into the turn here. Uh, so that is the the layout, and this is how it's looking from the top. It's a pretty solid layout, actually. Like I I like this this profiling of here. As I said, I just had to get advice on it and make sure that it was it was all okay. But it it rides perfectly. It's great. Yeah, that's what she said. Uh, we've got a supporting ride, just the one in this area. I didn't want to overdo it, partly because I didn't have the room and the space, and partly because I do have space over here if I wanted to put a proper thrill ride in here. So I'm kind of reserving this space for now. So just the one supporting ride, and because it's a, a whole um, flying theme area, of course it's going to be the balloons, right? And I don't think I've used it elsewhere. <laughs> I think I've purposely saved it. This is going to be the maintenance area. And then this is the area I was talking about with the bridge, uh, which is then going to connect to this part here. And it may also connect to the car park here so that you could actually bring lorries and stuff down this way and then onto the bridge through here. So that's what we're going for. Maintenance and then transfer track and stuff will be uh, will be in this area. So with the palette of stuff for the finale episode very much visible on show, I'm going to carry on building. I'll see you in a minute. Well, you guys, I confess quite a bit on this channel, but this is going to be a pretty special one because this, this is not what I planned at all. <laughs> this was supposed to be sci-fi. 
<laughs> it was supposed to be all modern and all techy and all that sort of stuff because you know it's for kids it's supposed to be fun and then i played about with this little spoopy building here and i was like i like this better so i swapped it out so this was not a quick build after all <laughs> but hey it's okay quick change of the color of the coaster a bit of an area profile and we're good to go <laughs> so let's show you around that's the first thing to show you the color of the coaster has changed i've actually changed it to uh, black and purple i wanted it to have that spooky spooky feeling uh, now what we have to remember with this one is because we are dealing with a kids park we can't go dark spooky you know this isn't thought park murder you in the forest and go and bury you this is more Alton Towers, witches and goblins kind of spoop going on. So that's what we're going for here. So I've changed the colour of the track. And I've also started to get the profile of the area. So I've dragged these telegraph poles over from the western area. I didn't actually point them out in the western episode. I probably should have done. So I've actually decided to use them again because it creates continuity with the entire park. It's almost as if actually this is like an old part. And maybe I don't know how the telegraph poles would end up over there. But they'd end up over there anyway. <laughs> So I'm going to show you this crappy little building to start with because of course it's completely unfinished. It's just an outline of a building but this is kind of what started it all. I started to play around with the spooky pack stuff and some of the stuff that I've never really used. And I was like, I need to utilize more stuff that's in game and I, I need to have more fun with some, with some of the stuff, right? So this is what I've done. And uh, yeah, I don't hate it right now. I've got ideas and I've got a vision for how this is going to be. My inspiration for this is very much the monster house party at Legoland, Windsor. That's that's spoopy horror stuff, right? It's acceptable for kids. And that's the kind of shape that the, the main ride building is. And that's where the inspiration for this has also come from as well. Now, I do want this to be a bit of a warehouse. So this is why this is looking a bit like this. I mean, you can hide the fact that it's a warehouse by having a fake ceiling in here, right? So, and then have a themed roof along here. But ultimately, all of this up here would be like HVAC units and all sorts of... Uh, storage stuff and whatever in the top end and then on the back end here it wouldn't be themed at all um, in fact I'm also toying with the idea of minimal theming along this side and only but in putting uh, decent theming along here quite how that's going to look yet yeah, I don't know I haven't quite planned that far ahead <laughs> it's tomorrow me's problem but this is what we're going for at the front of the station and this is kind of how I wanted it to look on the sight line I wanted it to be a cluster of haunted houses um of varying different statures and varying different sizes so that's why this is bigger in footprint but smaller in height and this is taller in height so that's what I'm going for here I've started to put the porch stuff all along here um, and the windows and whatever just to give it a bit of personality but of course it needs a lot of touching up it is a doorway to start with um, and a doorway to nowhere and it needs the rest of its roofing and, and just sorting out and just tidying up but I like how this is uh, how this is starting to come along and of course outside the main queue entrance you would have some kind of focal featurey type thing so that's what I'm going to do here maybe I'm going to put a trigger on here because this would be a new ride so they might spend the money on a trigger to do make this do something steam or something might come out of here don't know yet uh, so then we come on to the queue line so of course i've used my usual technique of the queue line of just putting out some uh, some of the mulch down here uh, just to sort of like line off where i'm going to be putting the path covers and stuff you've seen me do this a million times before uh, but i've actually chosen to use the haunted house railings for the for the queue line here right um I'm in two minds because health and safety would have a fit over these <laughs> kids running around spikes. No, but <laughs> this is Planet Coaster. You've got to suspend our belief at some point and it looks all right. So that's what we're going for. That's what we're going for here. Uh, let's just pretend it's not a death threat. <laughs> So we're going to come into the station. And of course, it's your, it's your traditional uh, wing coaster station. You're going to have left and right. Uh, and I think this is the right way around, actually. So this is the left, this is the right, because you spin around and face the other way. So yes, this is actually the right way around this time, as opposed to <laughs> World of View Muse. <laughs> uh, so what I've done is I've actually put the uh, I've put the balcony over the top here, so the queue comes over the back uh, this way, and it also comes back down this way. I'll show that from the top in a moment, so you can see how it's configured. And then the exit path, I've had to sort of do something a little bit different. So the exit path for the right hand side is actually down here, and for the left hand side is down this way. And I'm taking the conscious the conscious decision to put this pillar here um, because if it was actually IRL this would still be fine you'd have a gate here and a gate here and you could filter out both sides 
This is fine, IRL. Just in-game doesn't really like it, and I... Uh, whatever. So I've put in fake cattle pens, and not cattle pens, wrong one. Uh, fake batching gates in here, and uh, this is the best that I think we're going to be able to do in-game. I mean, it's not usable in-game, in but it just needs to be there because it's a dual-loading station. It's a wing coaster. It has to look like this. It has to be this way. And unlike the other parks, I've made this equidistant, so it's the same width as this side. Normally I don't do that, and there's reasons that I don't. Um, then I've also put a control box in here, so of course you've got the um, uh, the ride operator booth that's sitting in the top here. It started to kit this out for all of the stuff that you would normally find uh, in here, so of course you've got like control panels and your phones and your, your filing cabinets and all of that sort of stuff going on, and then of course you've got a view down into the station this way, and oh, I like this station. It's... Um, yeah, it gives me vibes of Curse of Drake for Mana in, uh, yeah, Curse of Drake for Mana. I keep getting confused with the Curse of Alton Manor, which is the new Alton Towers ride. Uh, by the way, we called it first. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's giving me Curse of Drake for Mana vibes on this one with the with the ceiling. Very gothic, gothic, simple vibe going on. And of course, I'm going to have like a wooden ceiling in here to hide the fact that it's a bit of a warehouse uh, a warehouse shed so uh, yeah right so to show you from the top the dueling station here we go here's the layout so it comes through you go uh, into the split here you either go around this way and then back or you go up around the top and down this way and then load from the other side and then of course you've got your exit path one here and then you've got your exit path one here good to go uh, this bit here is going to be the gift shop i haven't done anything in here yet i've just started to give it a bit of a feel i don't know if this uh, crypt stuff is going to stay um it feels like it probably should it feels like you might like exit through the basement or something but mm, I'm not entirely convinced. And then this along here as well is also just placeholder stuff for a few ideas that I've got, but I don't think I'm going to uh, I'm going to keep it. Of course, this bit's going to be hidden by ceiling, so it doesn't matter that it's all clipping through. Uh, so this is going to be a relatively low, uh, relatively low, low ceiling building. And then, as I said, this is what it's looking like from the outside. So this, uh, this, this, I don't even know what this, this roof is called. I'm just going to call it an eaved roof and I'm going to let you <laughs> correct me in the comments. Uh, this is going to be, um, all along here as well so it's going to look and feel exactly as it should i don't know whether i'm going to make it go all the way down or if i am going to make this an obvious warehouse from the back because of course we need to uh i need to thin this bit too because it's still visible from the queue line here right so it still needs to look decent from this from this side uh just to, i did forgot to show you in here by the way it's going to have the wallpaper, so uh, I'm going to hide all of the wood stuff in here, so it's going to have a uh, decoration and whatever going on inside. Last bit to show you in this update, then, uh, is the actual outline. So I've chosen to put water on this one. Um, again, I'm two minds. Uh, I don't really, I don't really, I don't like it, but I don't hate it. Um, and that's because this feels like this would be a coaster over water, uh, but now I feel, I do feel like I'm just stealing ideas from Build of Muse, and that's not what I want to do. I need to steal from real life things, not my own work. <laughs> but anyway, what I've done here is I've just lined out the outside of the pool, used the pebbles just to um, uh, hide the, the misdemeanors with all of the terrain and stuff that I've got going on. And uh, yeah, I'm just making it do its thing. And the reason I've chosen water, by the way, is because of clearance. If, you, if I start to do land, it doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel like it should do. Whereas if I had just dug a pit, and put the coaster in and then filled it with water it then creates its own little level rather than having land so that's kind of the thought process i'm going for here i think this is going to be one of those where foliage makes it comes to life so i'm going to just leave it for now as it is and on that high <laughs> end on a positive <laughs> i started the maintenance area over here and uh and then the the actual um, bridge going over into the maintenance area and then this little work area here. It needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of touching up. Um, so I'll do that in the, in the next bit. So this is how it's looking from the top. See you in a minute. It's going to be finished. Oh, yes, you guys, it's a spoop de doop de done for now stamp this week because the area has come together perfectly and it is so much better than the sci-fi was ever going to be. Like, I just couldn't make the sci-fi work. I wish I'd kept it so I could show you just how crap it was. I just deleted it. I just built for the bin and that was it. It was gone. But yeah, this is looking so good. And this entrance area, oh, it may as well be uh, Jumanji at Chessington, right? <laughs> We've stolen from there, but it just works. 
so perfectly. And guys, I just need to remind you, remember, this is not a thrilling coaster for adults. This is a coaster for kids. But the game doesn't let you have wing coasters for kids, but it's designed for kids. And talking of design... From the top here, like, this building is just a big square warehouse building and it doesn't look very inspiring, does it? It just looks a bit, like, rubbishy. But hey, guests don't see that. Guests see that. And <laughs> I quite like it. Like, I've never used the proper spoopy pack before. Not for building stuff. And, uh, yeah, I actually quite like, I quite like how this has turned out. By the way, you may have already noticed, and you're probably already wanting to pull it apart, that this isn't aligned up. That's by design. Like, when I researched haunted house buildings, you tend to find that they have these annexes that are stepped slightly higher or lower than the, the main part of the building. So I wanted to replicate that, um... Whether I dig it or not, I'm not entirely sure. Like, there's a little bit of the OCD in me that goes, no, I don't like this, it needs to be level. But actually, when I made it level, it lost some of its charm. It's really strange to explain. When you get the park, try it for yourself, you'll see what I mean. Uh, so yeah, this is what I've done with the um, <laughs> with the food unit. Now, I've not put any signage and stuff on this yet, because the area doesn't have a name. So I'm going to ask you guys to put that in the comments, please. But remember the alliteration? It has to alliterate. I'm not going to consider names that don't alliterate. So once we've got the name for the area, then I'll make some kind of signage and stuff for here. And that's this is where the sign's going to go. So it's going to go in there. But I've done touching up on here. Uh, a bit of colour changes and a bit of colour tweaking and then I've just put some awnings and stuff along the top and it looks pretty pretty decent. Uh, so the actual main area itself again you know how I do all my pathing and all of my plazas and stuff so I've just copied across the brick right, to, right the way put loads of flowers and foliage along here. Now remember that this is supposed to be a relatively new area so this is kind of like immature foliage going on. Lots of low level grasses that are just setting in as opposed to lots of the established more uh, grown up stuff. Um, and then we've got our balloon ride which sits sort of on a pad at the back. I kind of like how this sits. When I was putting it down I didn't think it was going to sit into the plaza properly but actually it does. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. Like, it, it now works. And it works enough for me to say, it's done. <laughs> and then, the actual ride area itself. This is um, also done. I've tidied up the, su uh, the supports. There's no custom supporting on this one. I am toying with the fact that this might need a custom support in here. I'm not convinced that this is okay. I mean, I've had it told that it's okay because it would balance itself here but it's not symmetrical and in my experience it's normally the symmet symmetrical stuff that makes it anyway whatever um, I'm not entirely convinced that that's the right supporting bit uh, supporting mechanism on here but I'm going with it so it's fine and then the actual pool itself now looks okay it, it I don't hate it I've also put the splash the splash zone in of course it's gonna have a splash down of course it is it's a wing coaster <laughs> and actually it makes the prestige a lot higher too I'll take it because uh, yeah otherwise it's gonna be a bit of a forgotten coaster um, so yeah I've put again this low grass um, just establishing in here so this is just starting to grow up but it's supposed to be overgrown over time so it's supposed to be like ravens flying through the trees and stuff right so eventually this will be growing up and it's going to feel like you're going through trees lots of established trees in this shot though you'll see uh, and that's because they would have put stuff around these trees they wouldn't have um, cleared the area and put new trees in so that's why we've got some established uh, established trees in here but also a lot of the uh, lower mature uh, immature trees going on in this area so the queue light itself uh, I've just put the path cover along and it's it's uh, yeah I think I'm starting to overuse this diagonal technique a little bit <laughs> like it's everywhere and when I look back at previous parks that don't have it you really notice it uh, but hey it's fine <laughs> <laughs> I've made this bit a little bit of a gateway. Um, I wanted this to. Uh, I wanted this to feel like it was like a bit of a gateway. I'm not going to bother putting fences and stuff in, up in here. It's just. It's just queue line theming. It's not supposed to be anything intense. But I have added a bit to the building here. This was just too stark, uh, um, a flat surface. So I've, I've put this little annex on. I don't think this was in the previous update. And then inside here, uh, we've got ourselves a little room. This is not meant to be an elaborate, beautiful room. This is meant to be as jank as this. Uh, so this is by design. This is deliberately crap. <laughs> but what I've done 
is I've just put the animatronic of the chair and just made it look like a bit of a room. There is also a trigger on the coaster that you can't tell at the moment because it's attached to the... Um, uh, it's attached to the, the station. Uh, but there's lightning that goes off in here. And there is a uh, thunder effect and a like a, a laughing effect that goes on. So that will uh, that will trigger as the train leaves. And then you walk into the main station area. And this is now completely done. Uh, this is how I wanted it to be with the roof. Like the panelling on the roof. And then you've also got the, the actual station area itself here. This is going to be quite difficult to get some decent shots, by the way. Because... Uh, there's just so much going on in terms of vertical and horizontal design. It's just a bit of a nightmare to, to, <laughs> to figure it out. I mean, the best shots are from up on this balcony, so we'll go up there in a minute. But this is ultimately what we've got for the uh, for the station, this dual loading idea, uh, and then lots of internal uh, haunted house kind of features going on in here. So I've just put a couple of chandeliers uh, up. Uh, I don't... No, these were in in the last update, weren't they? So uh, this is not new. <laughs> That's not news. Um, but <laughs> great update. Uh, but here we go. This is the the inside of the station. So it, like, it's that jaw jaw loading station. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And then of course this is what you get from the uh, from the actual balcony itself. And then coming down into the uh, the gift shop. So we're going to oh, try and get my camera right. There we go. It's quite an intricate little build. Uh, so I did keep the crypt, uh, the crypt walls in the end. I, um, yeah, I took them out and it didn't feel right. And I left them in and it didn't feel right. So I took the decision of what feels least worst. And it was this. <laughs> so that's what I've done. Uh, and then inside here, it's just a gift shop, right? So I wanted to make this... Um, like a little bit simple. It's a smaller gift shop, uh, and you, you know you've you've seen me do all of this sort of stuff before, right? But I just wanted to make this um, a merge point almost, where the two the two sides will meet. So this is the whole purpose of, of this area, just to buy stuff as you <laughs> as, as you walk out. This is the view of the plaza from the other side. Then as you leave the gift shop, and like with the um, the pirate area and stuff in the background, you get some really, really nice sight lines. And then if we look like through the rest of the park, there's the water coaster in the background. Uh, there's the pirate ship. And there's something going on that you've not seen yet. Hmm. Should we go take a look? I think we should. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted this idea of this area being a bit like fudged together this coaster kind of cut an area off a little bit so this ride here the part the plane ride would have been in all along the pirate area would have then been placed like awkwardly here leaving this ride annexed a little bit and just out on its own but they couldn't really move it because it would have been too expensive and wouldn't have had any uh, any like purpose to it. And then there would have been some kind of development of this area which has led to a redevelopment which has put the wing coaster in, in here. Now there may have been a bridge or a, a pathway or something that came through here um, that no longer exists because they came around this way instead. So I wanted this area to feel like almost intentionally disconnected from itself. And I think it works because you now get some pretty decent interaction with the lake and stuff that's going on here with this plane ride. So I'm happy with that and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with that. And then, of course, you've got this area now that feels on its own. In hindsight, do I wish that I'd used the uh, the witch merry-go-round in this space? Yes, I absolutely do. Um, but it's too the pad for that is too big to fit in this space i would have had to re reprofile the uh, reprofile the coaster even further talking of reprofiling you probably haven't noticed but this bit down here i have reprofiled uh, it was the the bend here was just a little bit too tight for the actual trains itself you would have collided with knees and stuff so what i've done is i've actually extended out the brake run slightly uh, made the bend less intense and then just reprofiled this bit uh, along here so uh, this not the same it's not the same layout that it was Maintenance area wise then, uh, I've put a ever so slight incline on this roof. So you wouldn't want your water to be sitting on a flat roof or to be falling onto the trains here. So what I've done is just an ever so slight incline here. So the water would run off this way and then down into this area here. So uh, you're protecting like your, your train and stuff. And then inside this area, this is just the maintenance area. There's nothing particularly special with this area. And uh, I can't wait for the comments to say, B&Ms don't have track in the maintenance areas. Uh, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, and then this bit is just your uh, it, it's just a transfer track so it's all, it's all sorted and then of course I've just started work on this area this is by no means done uh, it needs a TMTK pass and it needs a care pass along here but what I wanted to do is have the access road into the maintenance area here, have a, a maintenance road that comes this way so you've got access to this side of the park from the actual car park. You wouldn't have to go uh, through, where's my other gate? It's around here somewhere, isn't it? If I remember rightly, there's a gate somewhere along this way so you've got access to, to this part of the park anyway that's what i'm trying to say <laughs> and then this bit here wouldn't be used for much more than seating and extra uh, bits for the restaurant and whatever so that's what i've just started to do here this will be a bit more of a, a maintenance type area and i need, just need to find a way of merging it with the car park and then finishing off this um uh, finishing off this river and of course we are going to have a castle uh, there is already one I just haven't put it in yet, so watch this space for that. You remember back to episode episode one where I said I don't know if it's going to have a castle? Well, yes, yes, it does have a castle. <laughs> right, this coaster at the moment doesn't actually have a name. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's nameless. So I need to cut to myself again, but I don't actually know when I'm recording this what I'm cutting to. So this is going to be a bit of a mystery to me. Hold up you guys, this isn't what I was going to cut to, don't worry that's going to come in a minute, but I did want to just share something really curious with you that I've just found in the park. So I've just packed it full of 22,000 guests and there's this little trick that you can do to enter your park which is basically pause the game, delete every single path you possibly can in the park. I don't advise you do this, it's going to tax your computer. But you then press play and let the guests reset back to the spawn point. You then pause it again, close the park and let the guests leave. Right, that bit's important. That That's, that's all important. Uh, now that I've done that, the stuttering has gone. It's completely gone. Look, absolutely no stuttering whatsoever. So, my investigations are actually going to suggest that it might be the AI at fault, not the actual um, items that I'm using in the park. Just running that past you, let me know in the comments below what you think. But look, I am stutterless. There is nothing. And you've been watching it for the last couple of episodes, right? So, I, you're not going mad. I'm not going mad. There is no stuttering here. And all I've done is that little trick, emptied the park of 22,000 guests. I wonder why. I wonder what it is. Anyway, I'm going to cut to what I had originally planned to cut to. Here we go then, guys. This is what I was going to cut to because we have a name. It is Phantom Flight. Knocked. Guess what? You want to vote, buddy? <laughs> Welcome aboard the vote winning club. Great suggestion. Great winner. But I do also need to give a shout out to Steel Knoll as well because uh, there was a very similar name and that was flight of the phantom so i kind of got to give credit to that one too phantom flight flight of the phantom kind of like the same name but either way awesome name and it was the the clear vote winner so well done you guys uh, so that brings us quite nicely to the end thank you so much for getting to the end of this episode of course as always i appreciate you and uh, i appreciate everything that you guys do to support the channel so you know what to do like comment subscribe share it around do whatever you feel you need to do <laughs> we're getting there so next week we are doing the shooting ride but there's a twist because that's already done i'm actually in the park file now that has the final thing in it so, yeah, no spoilers, but there's a bit of a twist to it. So you're not going to want to miss it, that's for sure. Anyway, have an awesome week. I will see you next week. Thank you, you guys. Let's go for a ride. See you later. Bye-bye.